and welcome to Retro Logic. I'm Sam Wagers here with John Cummins and Shannon Eno. Uh, Dan could not make it tonight, but we are powering forward uh, as best we can uh, without him. So uh, don't worry, Dan will be back for the next episode. <laughs> at least we're fairly sure. Um, is, is this like the we should have did this at the end of the podcast and like like they do in Marvel movies like Dan Dan will, will be back will return <laughs> no but they do that after the movie with him in it though so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess we could have done that last there. week but <laughs> we are going to talk episode. about Marvel potentially a little bit later um, uh, but anyway um, uh, what's going on with you guys this week anything anything interesting happen uh, I was talking to you guys before the show but I, I traded for a Sega Saturn so I'm pretty in- pretty excited to get that in at some point and tinker around with it excellent i don't have any games yet so that might be a challenge <laughs> but uh my local does have a pretty good selection i just have to yeah you need to get some go, games go find one i actually what's, what's my... like the the first saturn game you you'd be looking for uh the one that i want the most is Bomberman. But it's also the one that probably be the last one that I get because it's like four hundred dollars. Yeah, Saturn Bomberman. <laughs> that's the one that can go up to ten players, right? Yes. If you have yeah, with the double multi tap, yeah, double multi tap. Uh, I'm pretty sure my local has a copy, but they do want four hundred dollars for it. So, uh, probably not going to grab that right away. <laughs> that's probably a mm-hmm. save up one. Uh. I was trying to think. There was another. Uh, they do. I think last time I was there, they had SimCity 2000, and it was relatively uh, within price range. So, I think it was like thirty bucks or something like that. So I might grab it just to have a test game, and it's something that I will actually play. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can't nice. beat SimCity. Nice. How about you, Shannon? Anything uh, interesting happen lately? Uh, let's see here. I um, Well, my daughter actually asked me to play the NES World Championship, or whatever it's called, Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, the party <laughs> mode. She's like, we should do that again. Do you want to do that? And I was like, okay. I mean, this is, you know. Do you want to lose? She's, i know right um she actually so she actually legitimately beat me in a zelda challenge which i i'm almost ashamed to admit um it was it was where you have to like kill the octoroks the fastest um like in the first screen up from the starting point and uh and i missed my first shot i was i was gonna do this amazing you know thing and i missed my first shot and um, that was just enough, apparently, for her to beat me. So <laughs> by like a by like a seven hundredths of a second or something, and I was like, "Wow, okay." So she was pretty proud of herself there. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll maybe I'll finally get her to uh, do a little bit of eight bit gaming. So nice, yeah, that's great. Um, I've still yet that, to open mine. <laughs> it's still there. Um, other than that, I've uh, just. Uh, got into plucky squire so Ooh, nice um i've only only had a chance to play through the first chapter but uh really enjoying what i've played so far so i awesome. when does the physical one come out because i bought it but i, I don't no know idea. i feel like it's i feel like it's uh a little bit yet but i can't remember exactly when i want i keep a, wanting to say november but i know that the marvel capcom yeah. fighting collection comes out then physical and i don't know if i'm if they're both coming out then and i'm just or or if i'm just yeah, misremembering but i don't know i just saw that it was available to purchase physically yeah. so i went ahead and did it because i know I'll probably that i'm i won't have time anyway right now <laughs> well that's the thing i know i'm not gonna have a ton of time but i also really wanted to support it it's uh it's been a, a game on my like hype list for for quite a while and um I I'll probably end up double dipping and buying it physically anyway. Um, yeah. I had, I had some uh, eShop uh, leftover funds, so I didn't even have to pay full price for it digitally. Um, nice. So yeah. Yeah. So far so good. 
Yeah, I know Ooh. Zelda's next week, so I didn't want to. Zelda's hop next week. That'll be a must play. <laughs> and yeah. then there's like you know, and then I'll go from that to probably Dragon uh, Quest three, and yep. uh, Brothership after that, and then that'll probably that'll that'll easily take me through the rest of this year <laughs> at the speed I have to actually play games. So yeah, it's there's this like it's been kind of dead for me. I haven't really been playing a whole lot. And then this, by the end of this month, I'll have my whole year laid out in front of me, I'm sure. Yeah, who needs a Switch to? <laughs> yeah, for real, right now. Right. Well, I should remind everyone, of course, that RetroLogic is not just a podcast, but a whole community of retro gamers. And we don't exclusively play retro games. Uh, probably a whole lot of us will be playing Zelda in a week. Uh, so if you want to talk to other people about Zelda... Uh, Echoes of Wisdom, or about every other Zelda game in existence, uh, it's a great place to do that. Uh, So you can always find links to the Discord at our website, retrologic.games, as well as all the other content, including our whole family of retro podcasts like Retro Groove, which is about to start their new season after the summer break, and uh, um, as well as Film Logic, which uh, just dropped an episode last week on... uh, I believe it was unnecessary sequels. Um, so yeah, you can check that out. Uh, all those guys are active in the Discord as well. Um, they're really cool people to hang out with. Uh, yeah, and uh, that pretty much takes care of most of the housekeeping. John, did you have anything to say for um, On Topic Retro? Uh, no, I think we're about to close out the uh dang it the retro rewind game for ninja gaiden last month yeah ninja Ninja gaiden Gaiden. that's right (laughs) i think there's the at this point the completing the game challenge has been met uh by octorok adam on Uh, original hardware no less yes on original hardware which was not required (laughs) <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, in fact, I encourage rewind. <laughs> uh, and then, but there's still an opportunity out there for submissions, probably within the next week, uh, to whoever can beat the first boss. Uh, it's World One Two, or Level One Two, uh, the quickest which I think Adam also had, but he didn't want to claim two prizes. So it's going to be a runner up for that one. Whoever is the fastest after him. Uh, so that's, that's still available at the time of this recording. If you want to get a time, it doesn't take very long. It's, you know, five minutes into the game to get to the first boss. So I wanted to make an easy one and then a challenging one. So get your times in and maybe you'll win 10 bucks. I don't know. Getting through the first level can be a challenge to me, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you play if once you play like once or twice, yeah, though, you'll yeah. get it. it's it, it's kind of holds your hand at the beginning there. But. It's it's all about just memorizing and patterns. Was, it, yep. it really is. But yeah, mm-hmm. no, and one day I'll stop being lazy and I'll come off my hiatus of my podcast because <laughs> uh, I have not. Uh, whenever I started my uh, basement remodel from my garage, I have had zero time. And then now I've kind of been enjoying having time again. So I haven't started it up yet, but it's coming soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shannon, is anything new happening with uh, Star Wars dads? Last week we put out uh, an episode and we um, talked about James Earl Jones um, primarily just uh, kind of went through some of our favorite Vader moments and, and Vader uh, lines. Uh, and yeah, just just had some good laughs and, and uh, also just uh, had a good time um, remembering him. Awesome. It was a sad deal. Yeah, huge, uh, huge impact on Star Wars and a lot of other things too. A lot of other stuff. The guy was... Definitely a legend. I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but it definitely the case in his, you know, for him. Um, I mean, 90, what was it, 92, 93 years old, though? I mean, um, 
It's hard. The guy to get led past quite that a life, and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, still a big loss, uh, not just to Star Wars, but to to Hollywood entertainment. Well, I don't think there's any more we can add to that, um, but we do have a prices retro game. Uh, so, uh, are we ready to play a round of prices retro? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. If this is your first time playing along at at home, here's how we play. Uh, I'm going to list off four or five games. Everyone has to guess how much the lot is worth in total. Whoever is closest to the actual value wins the round. Everyone has a list. Everyone guesses on each other's list. At the end, the player that wins the most rounds wins the episode. But watch out for our dastardly trio of um, AI competitors. Uh, They've been really uh, running rings around us lately, it seems. But uh, they... Yeah, they have. They tend to perform better when we have the full group of four, actually. Um, so maybe we can confuse them. Uh, I, I mean, I've won a few rounds recently. That's true. That's true. You've been you've been, <laughs> you've been representing the humanity, <laughs> champion of humanity, Shannon Eo. Working on it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, since you are the champion of humanity, Shannon, how about you go first? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um. So I just I don't know I uh, I did just kind of a list. There's there's not really a, a theme other than well you'll see <laughs> just in some wording. Uh, everything though in my list is complete in box. So first one is Dragon Warrior for the NES. Second one is Warrior of Rome for the Sega Genesis. Next one is Rome Total War for the PC. Uh, Then War Gods for the N64. And finally, Gods for Super Nintendo. Okay, hold on. Are these loose, complete in box? No, they're all complete. All complete. All complete. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, I guess I'll go first. I never know with PC games, especially, especially complete in box PC games. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes that box has a lot of stuff in it, and it becomes like really sought after. But sometimes it, PC games generally are not very um, high value for a lot of cases. Um, so I'm just gonna say two seventy. All right, John. I'm gonna go 250. All right, uh, actual uh, retail or not retail price. <laughs> I was going into uh, into the regular game show here. Um, uh, is 185 according to price charting? Price charting price. Dang it, Sam. I think the uh, oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Uh, let's see, the robot's going to be. The robot's going to be 260. He just splits the middle of our two guesses. Correct, yeah. What about the so dinosaur? No, I guess I up? win. Okay. Dinosaur. John takes the Dinosaur's down. at Over. 265. Great. Well, so I barely squeaked it out. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, so the prices, individual breakdown. Dragon Warrior, $61. Warrior of Rome for Sega Genesis, $19. Rome Total War for PC, $10. (laughs) It was not one of those with lots of stuff, apparently. Uh, War Gods for N64, $45. And Gods for Super Nintendo, $50. Nice. So I was actually just like 30. I I was just a little bit high on like everything. I wasn't close on a single thing, really, though. <laughs> it's funny how that works sometimes. I had Dragon Warrior to the T almost. I had it at 60. Nice. 
Yeah. But I also own that complete in box. Right. Yeah. I, I don't pay attention to complete in box prices a whole lot of the time. So if they're I, very, I only do if I buy them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who's next? Um, I can go next. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll be a little bit of spoilers. I didn't mention what the topic is, but I've been playing some Street Fighter. So I have a list of fighting games. Oh, boy. Um, these do vary a little bit in condition. Uh, so first we have Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max for the PSP. That's going to be complete in box. Okay. Next, Tech Romancer. For the Sega Dreamcast, Loose. Battle Fantasia for the Xbox 360, complete in box. And last, Aquapaza, Aqua Plus Dream Match for the PlayStation 3, complete in box. Yeah, okay. I guess I'm going first. I'm just going to go with the even. 200 200 even i've got 165 hopefully it's not right in between those 65 okay so this is unfortunate the total value is 181 dollars. dang it (laughs) so i believe that goes to the robot most likely uh hold on you said 181 yep while you're tallying that up, I'll give the breakdown. Yeah, it's definitely going to be the robot. Street Fighter Alpha 3 for the PSP is $20 even. Tech Romancer for the Dreamcast, $89.99. I was Battle one Fantasia. cent off on that one. <laughs> Battle Fantasia for the 360, $33.09. And Aquapaza is $37.92. That's the one that got me. Yeah, so Tech Romancer is the expensive one there, and that's the only yep. loose copy. And that's a there. PS3, and usually I PS3 is oh, not really. Was, that's, yeah, PS3. But, yeah, Tech Romancer is the Dreamcast. Yeah, Dreamcast. Or Dreamcast, I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that was the one I guessed 90 on. Um, I, was off on the, I was off on the PS3 one, though. That was that was another twenty dollars. Dang it! Yeah, it was another one where I have the PSP game, so I kind of roundabout know its value. Mm. So I think uh, the rest I think of humanity is already lost. Uh, it could be a tie. It could be a tie, or no, what? no. Shannon could win. That's right. You're the well, last that's gone, right? At the yeah, but at this point, I have a win. The, and then the trio has oh, yeah, a win, yeah. but it's whoever at this point, if Shannon wins or if you win, uh, it's whoever yeah. you have but to even beat. the tiebreaker because that tiebreaker really is three dollars. So yeah. <laughs> you have to be better than three dollars. <laughs> OK, no problem. Yeah, we got this. True. <laughs> no stress. Very close. Yeah, because he's already beat me by the tiebreaker rules. <laughs> yeah, uh, by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm just going to throw my things in for the uh, robot really quick. Or the dino. Just so I don't have to do it while I'm talking. And one more. All right. So my list is a Dan list where I just thought of the first word that came to my head, uh, which was flip for some reason. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of games, but I was already committed by the time that I figured that out. So the first, <laughs> the first game is flip and flop for the Commodore 64 complete in box. Oh, geez. oh wow. this is a cassette tape game. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the second game is just flip flop. And it's for the ZX Spectrum. This is also a cassette tape game. Completed box. The next game is Flip Out for the Atari Jaguar. Completed box. And the last game is Flip's Twisted World for the Wii. Completed in box. All 
All right, I guess okay, I'm going to go then. first. Yeah, you have first guess. <laughs> All right. I'm going with $68. Okay. I just have no no reference for those cassette games. Yeah. I, I can't say I'm confident in them. Um, I got $92. Okay. Which would be like 700 <laughs> Right. <laughs> the uh, total of my out. lot is $99.08. Wow, Sam. I was close, but not close enough. Not you, yeah, you were close, close but you're enough. still off by... Th- you had to be $4 <laughs> better than that. No. You would have been at 96 Uh, So, yeah, it's this is going to be the... Uh, uh, Sam gets it, but the the robot wins by tiebreaker. Yep, had the closest guess. Yep, because the uh, the robot would have been in between you guys. The dino was at one eighty, and the ghost would have been at three hundred. So nowhere near. I'm just impressed that you were able to find like the prices for some of those cassette uh, <laughs> based system. Games. Flip-flop I had to look on eBay <laughs> because price charting has it at $0. It's basically free if you find a copy of it. Well, I, I well, okay. Well, that's good. Now. I just meant uh, for the dinosaur, for the dinosaur that you were able to find those yeah. MSRPs. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, after, goes... after I dropped some Sega Pico games on there, he had to be really <laughs> that's true. So didn't want to yeah. be caught off, caught off guard again. <laughs> All right, I've got to hear the breakdown of this one. Okay, so Flip and Flop, the cassette game for the Commodore 64, complete in box, is $42.39. Uh, Flip and Flop for the ZX Spectrum, uh, another cassette game, complete in box, as I mentioned earlier, $5. <laughs> uh, Flip Out for the Atari Jaguar, complete in box, $40.39. And Flip's Twisted World for the Wii complete in box is $11.30, which I have no idea what that game is, but it looked kind of interesting. I was yeah, to right be honest, it sounded like Wii Shovelware to me. Yeah. I, I expected most of that to be the Jaguar game. I'm a little surprised the first one was, was high. Yeah. Yep. The first one got me. I was almost right on with the Wii game, though, because I said From 12. what <laughs> I've seen of, like, Spectrum and Commodore, like, nobody collects that stuff. Well, this is a Majesco game for the Wii, but the box art shows like a kid or something like standing on a tower or it's like, it looks like a castle behind him, but he's upside down and like there's pieces of it like flipped around. It it doesn't look terrible looking, but it it could totally be the worst game for the Wii. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, I don't even know what the yeah. genre is. It's action uh, adventure. It's, it's like a it's like a platformer. It's like a very basic looking three. I'm looking at gameplay right now. How, how does it look? Uh, not great. Not <laughs> great. Okay, there we go. But I mean, it looks like it looks like a serviceable, you know. I never heard of. I didn't know it existed. So that's we learned why it's some, like. Like a like a lesser N sixty four game, but obviously it looks. <laughs> this is graphically. this is we're all going to order it by the end if we don't stop right Oops, now. Twisted we're all going to have it ordered. It's going to be the I mean, next like, Retro Logic. It's game. only it's eleven like bucks. Kangaroos and stuff that he's whacking with a book. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I this poor Adam. He just sold all his Wii games, and now he's going to have to get this one. That's right. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, do so, we have a trivia card? I right. do. All right. First question: Which civilization can use war elephants in Age of Empires two? Uh, Persia. Persia. Yes. Persia. Okay. Boom. And second question: Which council was controversially advertised as the world's first sixty-four bit council when, in fact, it comprised? Of two 32 bit processors. Jaguar. Man, you are on tonight. Yes. I, I definitely remember that being a thing. 
<laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny how that happened, you know, because that was sort of a thing with the TurboGrafx-16 as well. With it yeah. 8-bit CPU or 8-bit GPU. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, oh, there was another one too. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I can't remember. There was another one though that was actually a, it was marketed as a 32 bit console, but I think it was only 16 bits. Might've been one of the CD game uh, consoles. I can't remember, mm. but it's funny, you know, you had add them together and you get, <laughs> you can say what you want. Yeah. I mean, anybody that owned the Jaguar wouldn't have argued that it was, uh, you know, for it being a 64 bit console, I'm sure. <laughs> like, yeah, this reminds me a lot of PlayStation. Okay, well, uh, we can take a short break and we will return with our show topic. Welcome back, and this time uh, we're talking about something maybe a little bit different, Um, and this really comes out of um, just an experience I had the last month or so, um, returning to Street Fighter VI, more modern game, I know, Um, but um, uh, I'd kind of put the game on the back burner, uh, played through a good portion of the, uh, what is it, the World Tour mode. Uh, but was kind of too scared to really go into a whole lot of online matches and eventually just dropped it because I was playing other stuff. But I came back to it last month. Um, I finished World Tour kind of quick. I wasn't really even enjoying it that much. Like it, it, it had kind of lost it. I'd kind of lost interest in it, but I just sort of powered through to get to the end, so to speak. Um, but I, I wasn't sure I was really like completely done with the game. So I said, you know what? Like it's, it's kind of scary, but I'm going to go into online matches and I'm going to go into ranked matches. Uh, and I actually had a really good experience is the long and short of it. Um, it's not my first rodeo. Like I, I kind of put some time in with street fighter five in the past. I've obviously played fighting games before. Um, but at the end of the day, um, just, it kind of left an impression on me cause I was sort of dreading it as like, Cause this kind of was my experience with street fighter five was like, you go online and you just lose over and over and you don't understand why. (laughs) And maybe eventually you claw your way somewhere. Um, and there was a bit less of that in this case. Um, so I, one, I did better than I thought I was going to do. And two, I just found myself actually enjoying where I was, which, which I think was like the bigger takeaway. Um, at the end of it all, I, I placed in diamond one, which, you know, in terms of the leagues, that's the second highest league. So after, after diamond one, diamond five, you rank up to master. That is literally the highest league. Um, master is a little bit special. Um, you're basically given an ELO rating at that point. And so it goes up and down based on who you play and who wins. Um, but the initial system gives you placement matches. Uh, it's sort of points you in that direction. You answer based on what your experience is. So you, it's, it's a little bit player oriented. Um, but it helpfully, because I'd played five, it's like, pick this if you were gold or higher in street fighter five. And I'm like, Oh, I did make it to gold in street fighter five. So I picked that one and I placed actually into, um, gold tier in this system as well, which is a decent couple of rungs up that ladder. Um, and I kind of quickly moved to about like platinum three. Uh, and by that point I struggled a lot. Like I ranked back down several (laughs) times, but I eventually did climb my way to diamond one, which is the rank above platinum. Um, and so I guess the takeaway of it is like, number one, I did better than I thought. It's a little bit deceiving too, though. Like I have to admit at the end of the day, I don't think I'm that good. There is a lot of filler ranks here. Um, 
And so I, I found some stats for Street Fighter VI as of like last year. Platinum is the most populated league. Like there are the most players in Platinum. And a lot of the reason for that is the way the ranking system works. You can keep moving up with like a less than 50% win rate rate, pretty much until you hit platinum Um, because you will gain more points for winning than you lose for losing. So you'll keep going up as a general trend. If you just keep playing, Mm -hmm. the other effect is as you keep playing, you're going to actually naturally get better because you're more experienced. You're not a complete noob anymore. So you're actually going to just start doing better against the other people in your same rank, even if you weren't moving up. So that kind of compounding effect uh, really means like you'll, you'll eventually get to platinum if you just play a lot of matches. Um, getting out of platinum is a little bit more of an achievement, but I'm not patting myself on the back too much uh, for all that. But I think the bigger thing was like thinking about the goal of skill-based matchmaking as it's not about like proving how good I am, but it's about finding people I can play with at a level where it's possible for me to like learn stuff instead of just face planting over and over. And that's like such a big benefit, I think, especially in fighting games. Like you really need equal level of competition in order for these games to be fun. Uh, In order for you to really get to a point where you can actually, I mean, I call it actually playing the game because like, yeah, there's, there's kind of a level where you're just mashing buttons. Um, if you're moving up a rank ladder, there's also the level where you're playing people who are seeing what they can get away with. And if you don't know how to teach them, they can't get away with that. They will. And that's not very fun. Um, but like, once you get to that point, like you actually think about what your opponent's doing, actually get in their head. And that can be a lot of fun. I think that's a lot more rewarding. And I think because the ranked system did what it was supposed to do, I was able to actually do that for street fighter six, at least for a short amount of time, you know, next, next week, Terry comes out at the matchmakings on a per character basis. So all the people who are already master with another character will be playing Terry and I don't want to play them. Um, But uh, it's just, it's interesting because, because in all this, like after just doing that, um, I've been seeing a lot of clips of a lot of like memes and clips of Marvel versus Capcom two specifically, because the, uh, the collection came out the digital version. I'm waiting on the physical, so I don't have it yet. But actually, because this because this whole experience was very positive for me, I kind of like given up on fighting games like I'm just not good enough. But I had a lot of fun Um, because this experience was positive with me. Like I finally actually placed a pre-order for the physical switch version of Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection, whether or not like I, I actually play a whole lot of online matches or not. I'm just like, okay, fighting games are still fun. Um, It kind of you know, I got over being scared of playing people online and had fun with it Uh, and and playing random people, even not just people I know. Um, And and so I've been seeing all this stuff about like people booting up Marvel versus Capcom too. And it's become definitely, it's definitely become a meme. Like there's a bunch of steam reviews now that say like refund this game. I, my first online rookie match was against Justin Wong. And I, I got completely obliterated, um, refund the game. But like, it, it's definitely a meme. There are some actual like issues with it. Some of that too is like, I think the reason I had a pretty positive experience is because I came back to the game after eight months when all the really good players are already in master rank and cannot play me. Um, yeah, so that's another dropped another off a little bit. Of yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the other worry I think I had was like, have all the other noobs just given up and like they're playing something else now? <laughs> like, is there anybody for me to play with? But like, I found people to play with that's like, yeah, these guys are at my level. Like, they're not crazy better than me. They're not crazy worse than me. And like playing them made me better, which was fun. Um, yeah. Sometimes those guys that are the masters of it, like they'll drop off. They only come back when new characters get released or... You know, something like that for a little while. Yeah, so they might, games they might drop there. off online. They might drop yeah. off online. They they might go to like local tournaments, tournaments. or something. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're they're playing people locally. Um, 
Yeah, but it just it kind of had me thinking a lot, um, both about fighting games and just about matchmaking in general and how that's improved over time. Uh, and of course, like from a retro perspective, you didn't have online matchmaking. Uh, you, you were confined to playing whoever was in the same room with you yeah, or whoever was at the arcade. Couch co-op matchmaking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get a bunch of buddies together and do like a round robin kind of thing. The, the mm-hmm. matchmaking in the arcades was just like the quarter system. Yeah, exactly. Like, whoever has a quarter next. there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's this kind of a strange thing too of like, in a local scene like that, like it's very possible for you to be like big fish in a small pond and online can kind of obliterate that where you're like, you realize, Oh, I'm not that good after all. Like if smash bros actually had good online, I would have to accept that because anytime I'm like in the same room with people, I'm usually the best smash bros player until I went to actual tournaments. That was always the case. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you get humbled pretty quickly at a tournament. Yeah, or most people do. So, what do you think this means, though, for these kind of games, uh, like long term, as far as like their online goes? So, when you know a year, two years, three years comes and goes, and there's not very many people online. Um, do, do the mat, does the matchmaking kind of, it's just more like, Oh, who's available rather than just skill level or does, yeah, does the that skill... can be a concern. Uh, I was talking a little bit earlier about mm. this, about the other Capcom fighting collection, the first Capcom, just Capcom fighting collection, not the Marvel versus Capcom one. And I had trouble finding opponents. Like, I had to wait a long time to get a match on the Switch Mm. version of that sometimes. Um, Which, I don't know if that's even, like, still the case. I might boot that up later, actually, since I'm kind of itching to play something else. And (laughs) I am a little bit attached to, like, okay, I finally pushed into Diamond, so I'm just afraid to play anymore now. (laughs) I don't want to rank back down. (laughs) Especially once Terry's out, which I think is next week. Um, But, uh, yeah, like... Some of that is like the player base goes down over time. That's kind of inevitable. Um, fighting games do have the benefit of typically the matchmaking is not... Well, you have a server for matchmaking, I guess. Um, but the actual game is peer-to-peer because there's a, it's a one-versus-one game. So it makes right. sense for it to just be peer-to-peer. You don't necessarily need a server to run that. Um I don't know what that means like long, long term um, in terms of who keeps playing these games. But that's that's kind of, you know, that comes with the territory, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of benefit, I think, to it. And these games do have offline modes, right? Like, right. And this isn't like benefit. a complete live service problem where right. when when the server shuts down, the game is unplayable. Right. Um, it's just the online mode. You might not find anybody. Um, there might not be enough players to really sort them by skill. Might be back to couch co-op. <laughs> yeah, back to couch co-op, exactly. Or, you, you, you know, local set up a room kind of stuff. Right. You might need to go check on arms and see <laughs> if you can still get a match. <laughs> right. I, I jumped back into arms about two years ago or so. I did just a random arms stream. There were still people playing. I actually had very little problem finding matches. That doesn't surprise me, though. It's got a pretty yeah. loyal fan base, the people that are holding on to it. Right. It's going to be one of those whenever they go to shut the Switch servers down, there'll be a few people hanging out in there, I, keeping I mean, it alive. <laughs> there are people who are holding on to these online as as councils go down. You know, these homebrew kind of servers kind of go up and um and kind of hold on to some of this stuff but like you said in fighting games though it's really not about the server so much as the peer-to-peer so i don't know i'd imagine yeah, that's you still, still possible. To, for everything to work as it is you still need, still need a server capcom right? still needs to be running a server right um it just doesn't yeah have to be I, obviously the emulation scene does what it does 
fighting games, there's a very, there's an audience, there's a thing called Fightcade that does, and it's arcade emulation, and that's a whole whole other bag of worms. Um, but obviously that's not official, and that comes with its own issues. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think, I guess I was just surprised, like, how much this enhanced my experience with this game. Cause locally I was never going to really like find people that were able to kind of match me in that same way. Um, and that is, I guess a problem a little bit unique to like one versus one games. Cause in a team based game, if you're playing like Splatoon or you're playing even something like very skill based, I mean, Splatoon is very skill based. But even if you're playing like Overwatch or Dota or whatever, like you can kind of like reconfigure teams to try to balance things out, right? Like uh, I've actually even seen this. Um, it surprises me how much of kind of a non-issue discrepancies in skill are if you get a random group of people together to play Killer Queen. Like mm. you can usually kind of sort out to where the teams feel kind of even. At yeah. Least. It's also um, very easy to pick up once you get... And that's a very moving. skill-based game, too. Yeah. But, like, when when the best players are on opposite teams, like, it, it sort of works. Yeah. It's a... Man, I want I need to play that again, but I think it's... I think the the it online is down for that. Yeah, the actually, online's down, so you only can yeah. play... Blame Amazon Web Services, I believe. Yeah, but I think so. I was about to say... I, I need to play that again, but now there's not a way to online. I'll have to find eight people around me. <laughs> if you do, though, it is great. Like, oh, I, it's I've super actually fun. Yeah, it. like, dude, eight and player I, switch multiplayer parties need to happen around me more often. Play oh, that, and I don't play Bomberman. I don't think that the. Uh, I don't think there was a lack of player base was the problem i think they just shut the server down no no that was yeah that was a um that was the service provider had some issue with yeah i don't know why yeah. somebody else didn't pick that back up and you know start I, there might be something available out there but yeah, it probably it, would require the best home we or... get like a re-release of the game that, that kind of remixes it and and has a new yeah someone needs to do something you know? though because that game is awesome and it's great I, I think the only way you would be able to get like a custom server or something would be if you had custom firmware on your switch to be able to log yeah, in. Yeah. I mean, there's like probably that. a way to do it, but yeah, it's a lot of hoops to jump through and you need other people to jump through those hoops to play with you. Yeah, exactly. And you're running the risk of, you know, being online without Nintendo's consent with custom firmware. So yeah, you might well, not, yeah. not yeah, stay online. The next, the next <laughs> firmware update will bring. Yeah, the, yeah, the next something. patch will yeah. take you out. You'll have to redo it all. Yeah. So, thinking about other games that really don't utilize this skill based, um, or level based, wherever you want to say, uh, matchmaking. Um, I think like something like Splatoon probably could benefit from this a little bit, in my opinion. I my experiences yes. with a game like Splatoon is that I'm either playing teams that are obviously just so far above my skill level that I'm not even able to leave my area, well, you know, and, starting and area. This or is actually I'm another against... like lesson I would pass on to people to to kind of go back to like that initial like my problem was I was scared of ranked matches. What you have to realize is in, in a lot of online games where there is a ranked and a casual mode, if you are a newbie, you want to play ranked because that's the only way you're going to play other newbies. Because if you play casual, that means there is no sorting by skill in a lot of cases. Right. And that's the case in Splatoon's Turf War. Yeah. Yep. And, and I actually think on the other side of it, I really want to see what like high level Turf War play is like. And you can't, not yeah, online. You're always you can see get it. A mixed Splatoon bag. tournament events will actually right. do it. I think. Right. But yeah. Um, but but yeah, Turf War. Ways. There's no ranked option for Turf War. No. And there's no it's unranked kind of option weird. for the other modes. Yeah. 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 It's true. Um, so th I think something like that would really, it would be really nice for that. 
Um, maybe Splatoon 4. We'll see. We'll see. They, they do seem a little reluctant to change the the way they've structured their online modes mm-hmm. from the past. Yeah, it's basically but... stayed the same since its origin. Yeah. Also Other, something... Is Samuel Mario still Kart? time limited? I think no. did they roll back no, the new they, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's just the big run that's time. That's a time. Yep. Yeah, they created yeah, that, a that's new. That's the only thing that like everybody time. said. Why is it like this? And they finally relented. And then they made something else like that. <laughs> so well, maybe, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's sort of it's more like the splat fest. It's like okay, this is this doesn't need to be all the time. The uh, does Mario Kart have a uh, like a ranked mode or anything? I was trying to remember. I don't Let's think just it does. go on and. Gets, you just get paired uh, I mean, with it, you you get, um, I think it's like a coin total or something based on how often you win. But yeah, I mean, you'll you'll constantly get into races with people very. Oh yeah, much more experienced than you are. And, and again, I, it's it's one too that like it's pretty hard to lose, and there it doesn't do any kind of leagues. Um. Because, like, as long as you place in, like, the top half, your score goes up. Yeah, you're going to get coins. And you always increase, like, more than you decrease. Which, I mean, to be fair, was kind of the same thing with Street Fighter. It's just, it it almost gated more by just experience than it did by raw, like, win rate or skill. Which was fine, actually, in that case. Because eventually you would kind of, like, it... It kind of just funnels you to like platinum one and then lets you kind of force your way up from there if you want to. Um, because again, like you'll, you'll rank up eventually, even without actually getting better. And odds are, if you play a lot, you will get better. You're going to get better, yeah. Yeah. To a certain ceiling. I mean, if you know, I, I don't think I've hit the peak of what my talent is capable of yet, even. But I, I think, you know, to that level, you, anybody could reach it with, with experience. I feel like in Mario Kart, every time I played online, I, I don't know that I've maybe won, maybe wore more than two races at most. But Mario Kart <laughs> does have to be careful about like overly punishing losses because there is there is a pretty big random chance to Mario Kart. Like even the best players do get blue shelled. Yeah, but it, some of those players are. Some of them so, can dodge the blue shell. Could dodge the blue dodge, shell, or yeah. some of them They're are so, so far, far ahead, ahead that yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't I've, matter, yeah. I I mean I've I've been almost lapped by people, you know, and, and I thought I was doing pretty good. And I'm like, yeah. how the heck do you even Well, they know how to every shortcut, every every shortcut, yeah, every, every uh glitch the, area or whatever. Yeah, quickest yeah, way every, around yeah. the circuit. Every drift turn. Yeah. Um, and then I think of like a, a game like Tetris 99, which they actually introduced a mode that was just for people who have gotten first place. So to be able to play that mode, you had to have won at least one, um, match of, of the, uh, regular base game or base rank. I don't know how to say it. Um, yeah. which I think is kind of an interesting, so it's kind of like a winner's you know, circle kind of a thing so that, you know, you only play against other people who have won the game. Yeah. I'm not allowed in that one. I am not either. (laughs) Neither am I. (laughs) I think to this day, the best I've done is third. And I thought I was decent at Tetris. I always did too. It's funny. It's funny because I, I got a first place. Maybe it's just a way easier game. I don't know. I got a first place in Pac-Man 99, like day one. Yeah, I think it's just um, an easier game. Yeah, I, I found that too. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Um, uh, I, I it took me a long got... time to get. It took me a long time to get a first place finish in F Zero Ninety Nine, and I haven't done it again since. Yeah, that one's another hard one to do. Uh, it's quite hard. But I think my best. I, I've made it further into F Zero Ninety Nine than I have in Tetris. I don't think I've cracked the top fifteen well, in Tetris. I, Pretty sure my I've, best is seventh. By the time I got a first place finish, I could pretty consistently get top twenty. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I've yeah. I've hit I've hit within the top ten. A like few you, times. you need to you need to be where you like you're always top twenty and then get lucky. <laughs> yeah, I've 
I've been impressed with the fact that if I do pop back into Tetris 99, I'm usually able to find matches relatively. Oh yeah, there's quickly. always like, there's people still a lot that. of people playing that it's game. It's Tetris, man. Yep. You can guarantee Vin's people usually on there. Tetris. That's right. <laughs> so. You guys have any other thoughts on uh, matchmaking? Yeah, it's it's just kind of interesting the perspective it gives you on the past where this wasn't a possibility. Um, and I think I think it is like really part fighting games specifically. I think benefit from it a lot. Um, and, and I've noticed this ever since um, I got really into Smash Bros. Brawl. Because at the time, my older brother was too, and we could match each other. And like that's just such a crucial thing for uh, games like that and Smash when you're playing it like that, one against one especially. Um, that it, it gives you that um, possibility of improving, makes you feel rewarded for improving, and it's not like so out of reach. Um, it really is, I think, responsible for the recent resurgence of fighting games. They do seem to be more popular than they've been in a long time. Um, and yeah, it, again, it, it made me really excited to try Marvel 2, even though I probably will just get destroyed um, because I've <laughs> never actually played Marvel 2 in my life. And I'm still not that good at any fighting game. Smash probably is the one I'm the best at, and that's one that doesn't translate well to others. But all the same, like it, it, um, it, it allows you to access, uh, I think, a part of the game that's difficult to get if you're um, just restricted to your local um, environment. Depending what your local environment looks like, I suppose. Maybe you live near a really cool arcade where lots of people play all the time, but not all of us do. Definitely not me, not anymore. Not me. Even the arcade that was in our mall is toast. Yep. Sad. Okay. Well, that's about it for our topic. So, uh, yeah. Uh, any listeners want to chime in with some of their experiences with just online multiplayer and how getting into the really sweaty matches is sometimes really fun, uh, even if it is scary. Um, or maybe you have different opinions on it. We'd love to hear them. So yeah, hop in the Discord, let us know uh, what games you think have really benefited from online and from having that kind of matchmaking, uh, or which ones you think still don't really do it right. Um, it's, it's always worth talking about. Uh, this has been another episode of the Retrologic Podcast. Uh, if you like what you hear, you can check us out on Twitter at Retrologic.Games. And again, jump in our Discord. You can find the links there. Uh, until next time, have a good night or day or whenever you're listening to this. Bye now. Goodbye. Bye.